we have had the biggest, hottest fire that I've, that I've ever seen anywhere. We've had some large fires in the county before, but certainly nothing this devastating that covered such a large area. In March of 2006, Texas experienced the most devastating wildfires in the state's history. Fueled by drought conditions and high winds, more than a dozen separate fires raced across the Texas panhandle. The two largest moved 45 miles in just nine hours and spread into nine counties. It went from being a beautiful, pristine, rolling prairie to uh, what looks like a wasteland. Before it was over, 12 people had died. Homes and ranches burned to the ground. Thousands of cattle were killed. More than a million acres were destroyed, including some of the state's prime wildlife habitat. Well, that used to be beautiful little blue stem grass, some yucca sagebrush, about knee to waist deep, primo habitat for quail, white-tailed deer, and all sorts of prairie land birds and stuff like that. And now it's just dirt and yucca stumps. Fire has always been a natural part of the prairie environment. And given time, the land has always recovered. But these fires were unusual. They burned so hot and so fast, almost nothing was left. It didn't miss a canyon, a creek, a draw, nothing. It got everything. fire ripped through here really hot, took out a multitude of the mature cottonwood trees, which are the turkey roosts. And just standing right here looking at cottonwoods, I see dead cottonwood, dead cottonwood, dead cottonwood, dead cottonwood, dead cottonwood, dead cottonwood. Dead cottonwood. Just south of I-40 in Donnelly County is the Martinez Ranch. Dove, this is good looking stuff here, man. Jeff Bonner is a biologist with the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Three years earlier, Jeff had helped initiate a management program to improve habitat for the lesser prairie chicken. Good nesting habitat and lots of weeds coming up, a little stick leaf. When you compare the landscape before the fire to what it looked like immediately after, you have to wonder how it could possibly recover. Last time we were looking at this, grass was about this deep. We had grass this high. This high. It was a sea of little blue stem and some big blue stem and some other stuff. And that is all burned up. And we've not been able to locate any of our prairie chickens that we know that were there prior to the fire. We can't go and really fix anything right now. We just have to let nature take its course and, and hope that everything will come back uh, the way it was. I think it's a natural human emotion to want to run out there and fix it and make it better and hurry it and repair it, put a Band-Aid on it and see how fast we can get it back in shape. But bottom line is something like this, it just takes time and rainfall and careful range management. On ranches where cattle are the crop, decreasing the amount of grazing was as important as the rain in allowing the land to recover. A deferred grazing program paid cattle owners to keep their herds off the land during the growing season. That gives those pastures an opportunity to recover, put down root growth, put down top growth, which is gonna make for healthier plants as opposed to being consumed all the time. There's some areas out there where it's just dead. Here on the Flowers Ranch, land that was once used for grazing cattle now part of a wildlife management program. The sandy hills, rocky canyons, and grassy mesas are home to a variety of wildlife. Everything from mule deer to quail to pronghorn antelope. Trees, uh, shrubs, uh, all the grass is gone. All cover, all habitat for all the wildlife is at this point gone. 
for the most part, the wildlife are on their own. Fire has long been one of a landowner's best habitat management tools. Burning removes excess debris and stimulates growth. 48% on the humidity and 71 degrees. Right now, fire's got a really bad name, but it's important to keep in mind that this was not a prescribed fire. Prescribed fire means we have certain goals and objectives that we want to achieve with the fire. We want to knock the brush back. We want to increase perennial grasses. We want to increase weeds, depending upon how you do it and when you do it. Nobody who knows anything about burning would ever go out on a day with 75 degrees and 10% humidity and a 45 mile an hour wind and a lot of fire. That's not a prescribed fire. Right after the fires, biologists began studying the long-term effects on the habitat. Using a GPS unit to mark his location, Jeff set up eight photo points. This allowed him to record changes to the landscape. One week after the fires, rain finally came to the panhandle. And just two weeks later, the land was showing signs of recovery. And it doesn't look near as bad as I thought it was going to. A little two inch rain we got is going a long way. If the soil will hold together, it'll be a really good thing in a couple years. Rain, time, and rest. Five months after the fires, some areas of the Panhandle received six inches of rain. And a year later, the landscape was springing back to life. Here's a wonderful plant. This is a species of croton. It grows little seeds, nice, fat, juicy, round seeds that the birds like. Considering what it was last year, it's all looking a lot better. For wildlife, it's looking outstanding for a guy making a living grazing cattle, it could be better. The story was largely the same to the north in Roberts County. This is a typical short grass prairie site, tighter soils and grows a lot shorter grass, about, you know, if it's in really good shape, knee high. And one year later, we finally got some good rain. Nearly all of this turned to blue grama and buffalo grass. Good for cattle, very typical of short grass prairie some stiff-stemmed flax, highly preferred food for antelope, very diverse, and uh, it's looking a lot better. Looks really good. Chickens are really odd. They want lots of different kinds of stuff and different amounts scattered over a lot of country. I would say, as far as chicken habitat, it's probably better right now than it was in 2005. The brush cover's been knocked back some, which is very important for chickens keeping it more of a prairie. Birds didn't show up this year. They weren't here last year after the fire. They were the year before. And I certainly haven't given up hope on them. I think they'll be back. The Flowers Ranch has been making a comeback as well. This time last year, it was basically black and dirt. The habitat for wildlife is disappearing. And we think if we take care of this and in the long run, that it's just an investment we're making in the future of this ranch and the future value of it. Uh, we enjoy doing it. We don't make much money at it, but we're going to continue to develop this ranch for wildlife. From nature's point of view, the fires of 2006 will, over the long term, be good. The increase in diversity and plant productivity will give the animals more food, more cover, and better habitat. Regardless of what it did for the habitat, regardless of how good it's going to be for wildlife in 5, 10, 15 years, do not want that to happen again. Too devastating. These animals have been living up here on the prairie for thousands and thousands of years, and this isn't their first fire. They'll come back, and they will all recover.